Now this is another lecture that might be very deep for some of you. The reason why I'm recording these is also because I feel compelled to share with you what is unfolding within my mind. And it's much more spiritual than the actual coaching program itself where we're focused on how to get what we want on the physical side of life. But we should never forget the spiritual sides of life. And these are unfolding and I figured it might be a good thing to document these ideas that are unfolding within my own being so that it might help you out find your own spiritual nature now today's lecture is about being born from above now this is a highly spiritual occurrence it is tied to the memory of who you were before you were in the world in other words at first glance you consider yourself born a certain individual with a certain family but once you are born from above, you actually have detached yourself from this whole perception altogether and see a totally different world that erupted from within your own mind. The body was created in the womb and when you came out of the womb, your own consciousness wasn't active and developed. This happens a little later in life. Then once that happens, the mind is generally focused on the identity we were given by our parents after we were born. But that is the physical side. What does it mean to be born from above? It is like remembering that your consciousness itself is not actually part of this body, but that it is the spirit of the universe itself dwelling inside the body. Therefore the so-called physical birth becomes completely irrelevant to this true awareness of being. You can literally see proof of this. When a baby is born it doesn't talk right away. It doesn't think right away or do anything right away on its own. But then as it grows older, there comes a time, not soon after, it does start to do stuff on its own. And that is when consciousness itself came into the body. The consciousness didn't form out of the body, it is simply tied to the body. And it's through this consciousness our power of imagination awakens and quickens into activity by our use of it. And we learn to create like the universe is creating. Everywhere you look you see the pattern of creation. Life is expanding and creating new things all the time. Now the spirit of the universe is expanding and creating and you have the same power to expand and create whatever you want in your world. This is your true identity and power and you can clearly see it has nothing to do with your physical birth or identity itself. It's completely independent of such physical aspects, but that is where most people live. They only identify with the physical part so the statement being born from above sounds ridiculous to many. I can tell you, however, that for many of you, this is already occurring. If you already have been consciously working with your own mind and imagination to create things, that is part that will ultimately cause the awareness of what I'm talking about to unfold. You will realize you are much greater than you realized for many years prior, once you start to operate from within. Another way of looking at this would be to go back to your own birth. Can you remember being born? Your parents and other people who were there can remember it, but can you remember it? I personally can't and I have never met someone that remembered it, but that is because your consciousness gets tied to this body and once it's nailed to the body, so to speak, you start to operate from this current awareness and identity. But then as you go through life, you will notice more and more often you'll be unsatisfied with life. You will face situations in life that you don't like and you search for a way out. At first, you search for the way out through physical things, but then, as this all keeps failing, which it always does, sooner or later, something inside of you starts to tempt you to look within your own mind. Something inside of you actually compels you to turn your attention inwardly, and that is when the inner world of imagination, thoughts and emotions are being consciously observed, and you realize you can direct these aspects. Before that, they were always dominated by the physical world, but now you realize your own consciousness can actually direct the whole thing inwardly and there we see another part of what it means to be born from above. For you cannot operate from within if your mind is still being dominated by the outside world and your physical birth is part of the outside world. So you realize your current identity that you thought you were isn't really the real you. If I introduce myself I would say I am Renéo. But I'm also aware that Brunel really is just a name made up of letters. So if I go beyond that, I might point at my body. But I also know this is not the real me. Because when I go to sleep, I suddenly walk around totally different worlds. So who is the real me? And is being born from above an actual real event that takes place within our minds? If so, we should investigate. But the difficulty lies in the fact that we can't investigate it through any outside methods. 
we actually have to dare to look inside of our minds and focus on the fact that we are even conscious and what it means to have an imagination. Once we start contemplating these aspects within our own being, we slowly but surely learn to overcome our old identity and it gets replaced by our true identity, for the visible always came forth from the invisible. So here I am going through the world, making many mistakes. Maybe I have hurt others and myself in the process. I have acted in strange manners. And then one day, I start to wake up from within. I actually start to realize none of my earthly aspects make any sense. What have I been doing? And it's just like waking up from a dream. But you are still in the body as it occurs. If the universe created me, which it did, or as they say in religion, if God created us, then we have to go through all the horrors of this world in order to awaken. For if the universe already had woken us up from the very beginning, there indeed would be no reason whatsoever to the entire universe itself. Yet here we all are. We have been thrown into form in the hopes of returning back with true awareness. So imagine, you could create another human being. Let's suppose you actually created someone out of thin air and you knew I've made this creature in my own likeness and I wanted to realize this, but I wanted to be free and come to this awareness in its own strange little way. Well, that is what humanity is. And these words are flowing to the God in me, to the God in you. If you meditate on this and contemplate it deeply, one day you will start to sense the truth in it. The truth lies beyond the ego identity you now hold. So we learn to partake of the creative power of the universe, which operates through the imagination of mankind. In other words, again, we let go of this illusion where the physical world and our identity seem the only thing that existed. Many are still living there, but people cry out to a God outside of themselves. They don't understand why God would let horrible things happen to them or others. The truth is, there is no God other than your own consciousness, and we have to learn to exercise it individually so we can bring forth good things. It is only our own ignorance of this inner world and of our own responsibility that causes us to make mistakes or to act on negative concepts. If we can't sense, feel and see the oneness of it all, we always feel in conflict with others and the world at large. Now try to remember it. Try to actually remember who you are and what you are. Don't just assume you are what you were named by your parents. Don't just assume you are our body. Try to remember what you are in consciousness. That is what is happening once you start to wake up. So again, let me repeat this one point, which is vitally important. Imagine you created another human being out of thin air, for the whole universe came out of nothingness. That is how it happened. Now you want this creation to join you and take part in your own creative power. But you can't force it, or at least you're not willing to force it. You actually created it so it can live in its own manner. The only thing you can really do is stand back and hope that it will remember its own source. You will truly love what you have created and let it make mistakes and let it do loving things. Knowing that one day it will start to remember its true origin and then it comes back to you. Well that is what all religions in the world talk about. That is what all spiritual groups are aiming for. To get back to that oneness and this is all part of that journey for us to return home. But not in the same manner. We will return with wisdom and partake in the same universal oneness as the very source of creation itself. There is no vengeful God that will condemn you to hell. The only hell you will ever experience is not knowing your true identity and what you really are. For you in reality are a magnificent form of consciousness expressing itself through this body. You were created by the universe in the hopes of you one day realizing this so that joy, peace and love might crown your days for all of eternity. Remember who you are, and if you can't as of yet, then do not feel bad. It will all unfold as time goes on. In that case, I'm simply planting the seed of this idea in your own consciousness, so it can one day bloom when the time is ready.